to the book of Mark just a little past where we were at this morning Mark chapter 11 glory to God I'll check on sister Athena and them when we get out of here I got no service and uh, it's got one response I, I don't know what's going on if she's been battling some, some kidney stones it seems like and, and we'll uh, find out after service tonight. And so we'll be praying for them. There's so many tonight that's out that's just under the weather. That's uh, uh, just a lot of things going on. Amen. How many believes tonight as Christians that God doesn't have to have us? But it's God's desire to have us. You believe that? And if you believe that, then you, you would believe that that we're needed. Like I said, he, he, he could do it all himself, but there's only two things he ever done without incorporating people. And outside of those two things, it's always been a, a let me say it like it's a plea from the Lord for us just to surrender our lives unto him that we could be used uh, in the master's plan. Mark chapter 11, verse number 1. We stopped this morning where Bartimaeus is not blind anymore and he followed Jesus in the way. The caption in some of your Bibles might read something like the triumphal entry. This is him, Jesus, coming in now to the place and, and he's instructed his disciples to go get something that he's in need of. Amen. And in verse 1 of chapter 11, and when they came nigh to Jerusalem and to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent forth two of his disciples, said unto them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as ye be entered into it, ye shall find a coat tied, whereon never man sat, loosing and bringing. And if any man say unto you, Why do ye this? Say that, say ye that the Lord hath, I like this, need of him. And straightway he will send him hither. And they went their way. They found the coat tied by the door where out, without in a place where two ways met, and they loosed him. And certain of them that stood there said unto them, Why do ye loosen the coat? And they said unto them, Even as Jesus had commanded, and they let them go. Father, we love you tonight and we thank you. For another opportunity as your people just come together and worship you, Lord, here tonight. And I pray now to speak to our hearts in this divine word of God. Lord, as we always so careful to give you all the praise and the glory and the honor. 
Lord, bind everything that would try to distract our minds, God. And, and Lord, the, 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 the plagues and sicknesses, God, that's stricken so many of your people. Father, your hand of healing be present, we pray. Reach out, Lord. Stretch your hand out and touch every need and make every way as we're so careful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor. And we ask all this in Jesus' wonderful name and we would say amen. amen. You see it tonight, just want to preach a simple thought needed for our Master's use. You see, when you at times apply for a job and, they, and you send your resume, sometimes they tell me that the boss man will say you're overqualified. Other times they say you're underqualified. Amen. And they go through a strenuous, a strenuous list there and begin to look to see about the qualifications uh, that you have per se to the job description they have. And sometimes it works out, sometimes it don't. Well, Jesus don't follow that same guideline, but he does, he, does, he does encourage his people just to take the simple instruction of following the rule and obeying the word and don't worry too much about the outcome. God said he'll be in, in, in charge of that. Now, as we preached this morning, we saw another miraculous miracle that Jesus did. Now, this is coming down to the time now that he's fixing to enter Jerusalem. It was known as Passion Week. Uh, it was a time now that things are starting to wind down uh, and, and to the climax of, of, the, of the crucifixion of Christ. Uh, and, and, and at this particular time in the popularity, he, there was a lot of followers. And we read on down, we find that when he comes back with that coat, and you got to understand tonight, I want to just address that, that, that it's a, it was a, a donkey is what it was. It was a donkey that has ne a man has never been on. Now, he, he told his disciples what to, what to do, what to look for, where to go, and how to get it. Amen. That's pretty good instructions. And at times, he tells you and I the same thing. What to do, where to go, uh, who to ask, and how to get it. A amen. How many knows he provides? Yes. How many knows the Bible said he'll make a way where it seemed to be no way? If we just simply follow the instructions now. But sometimes we can feel fear and we can and fret when we opposed. Uh, that's why Jesus said, if any man stop you, you tell him this and they're going to let you go. Man, I want to tell you we can have confidence in the Lord tonight. Uh, but let me let me enter into this place where two roads met, kind of like a fork in the road tonight. Uh, so we find out, amen, uh, that a scripture that I want to put in, in play here tonight to, to, to coincide with these scriptures, we find it you don't have to turn. It's very quick and easy. Ephesians 2 and 1. And you have the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Now you say, well, how in the name of the Lord is that going to coincide with talking about a tied up donkey that man's never rode? Well, we find out tonight, amen, that to find out the truth and the, and, and the severity of the story at hand, you would have to go all the way back to the book of Exodus to find the significance about that little donkey. Amen. That never, that man has never rode. Huh? Now you got to understand that the, the concepts now that that Jesus uh, has has is everywhere he's went he's walked. But here comes a time in ministry now that he's calling for a vehicle. He's, call, he's not calling for a caravan. He's not calling for a fanfare. He's just simply calling for a vehicle. And one of the lowest things that, uh, uh, that uh, our Christ could ride on would be riding on a virgin coat, per se, a coat that's never been rid. He's going to be tied up outside of a house where two roads are coming together. The, uh, the disciples is going to be instructed how to go about to bring this coat. Uh, but what Jesus is fixing to do here 
is fulfill the prophecy of Zechariah 9 and 9 where the old prophet said rejoice greatly O daughter of Zion shout O daughter of Jerusalem behold thy king cometh unto thee he is just and having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt the foal of an ass simply a donkey man a, a donkey now that's in low standard uh, dis, the disregarded as some elite beast a amen but when we find out the significance of, of this tied up colt uh, understand something about the donkey that you find back in Exodus when they come out of, of the uh, of the, the, the taskmaster's hand uh, Pharaoh's grip out of Egypt uh, they had no horses uh, or camels uh, they had donkeys, the beast of burden. Huh? And, and that was a law that God instilled back in that day. It went something like this in Exodus 13, 11 through 13. Huh? God told Moses to say, and it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites. Now, many, he's brought you out of, out of Egypt huh? as he swear unto thee and to thy fathers and shall give it to thee that thou shalt set apart unto the Lord all that openeth the matrix and every firstling that cometh of the beast which hast thou hast, uh, the males shall be the Lord's. And every firstling of ass uh, that, that shall redeem with the lamb. Now remember, every firstling of this donkey, when this, when, this, when this donkey gives birth to the firstling, amen, of a male breed, huh, you're going to find that some, that's, it's got to be redeemed with a lamb. And if thou wilt not redeem it, then thou shalt break its neck, huh, and all the firstborn of man among the children shalt thou redeem. Now understand, to waste, to waste a, a, an animal, a vehicle of transportation, to break its neck, that's why God put it in law like that because nobody was going to do that. It was the whole livelihood of the way that they, they maneuvered in those days. Uh, but that, that unclean beast, uh, that unclean beast would have to would have to be atoned. Amen. Uh, and the way that this would be atoned or redeemed uh, would be by a lamb, a sacrifice of a clean animal. Uh, now you say, I don't really understand yet. Well, hold on a few minutes. Uh, that donkey back in that day, that Old Testament was classified as unclean clean. So he was neither parting of the hoof nor chewing of the cud. He is doubly judged unclean. There's no hope for him. Amen. It's kind of like you and I now in Galatians chapter 5. That old donkey of the Old Testament was like you and I before salvation. We were flesh. We were of the lowest regard of flesh without Christ calling us. Amen. Without the blood of the Lamb redeeming you and I. We were worthless and without a cause. But in this state, and in this state, you and I cannot come to the presence of God. We can call out in a prayer that the Lord will save our soul. But to walk is unredeemed. Amen. To walk is still lost. You don't walk in the fullness and the assurance of, of the Lord. Amen. So this, this, what I'm talking tonight about this little tied up coat uh, will bring a strong reflection of you and I before salvation. <laughs> Glory to God and then after salvation. So we find now in this state, we're talking about now in this state, this donkey, he cannot come into the presence of God. I said Abraham could bring him only to the foot of Mount Moriah. He was a stranger. He's alienated from his creator. Ephesians 2 and 12 says that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But then I'll give us good news. If we read on further, we would see a, a holy translation. Amen. For that we were lost. Uh, but glory to God, we can be found. Now going back to this donkey. This donkey in, in its nature is stubborn and a strong-willed creature. Who's that sound like? <laughs> Unregenerated man. Think about it. What he lacks in brains, he makes up in will. He's a rebel. Oh, yeah. I, I've never been around near as many as some of you here. But I remember growing up, Papa had one. 
And that thing done what he wanted, when he wanted. Come on, he was stubborn. Amen. Sometimes Paul had to come to Jesus to meet with him an axe handle. Amen. I don't know who got the best of who there. Uh, uh, Paul hit him between the eyes, but it was after his blood pressure went sky high. All oh, that rebellion. That rebellion's a, a sight of witchcraft, man. Uh, I want to tell you, before we were regenerated, born again, uh, we just that rebellious. But can I tell you, even now, after we've been, uh, after we've been brought into the fold of God, uh, after we've been born again, this old nature that still is very present with you and I is still stubborn. It's mean spirited. It's cantankerous. It's ornery. Come on, somebody. It's moody. It's grouchy. It'll lie. It'll cheat. It'll steal. That's why when Paul looked at the church of Ephesus, he said, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Thank God we were not only that one time. gloriously changed think about this beast ah, he was a beast of burden he has put into hard labor all of his life he may not be yoked up in the law with an ox no sir you, can't, you couldn't yoke him up with nothing clean because he's unclean and without redemption he shall surely perish <coughs> he is the classic example of an unregenerated person called a natural man. As saved as we are and as saved as we want to be, at times, if we don't keep this thing in check, amen, that this thing gets the best of you and I and we see that old rebellious nature. Oh, oh, what are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about early one morning when you know that that was God just woke you up. But oh, I think I think I can pray just as good laying right here in the bed. And two minutes you sound asleep again. Come on, I, I, we don't want to see a show of hands. We don't. We don't ever want to admit we own it. We, you know, I want to tell you at times, glory to God. If not keeping this thing not only in check but keeping this thing dead, I said glory. Glory to God. Somebody said they ought to just break his neck. No, no. Because that beast of burden is, is worthy. He's worthy of his wages, of his hire. Come on. Oh, they would feed him. They would put they would put him in a stall. You said they just wanted to use him to carry the load. Well, friend, can I tell you that you and I one day found Christ. Amen. As Christ comes searching for you and I, we were under a load. We were tax beyond measure. But Jesus said, my yoke is light. My burden is easy. So come to me and I'll give you rest. But understand the rest that he gives us is not leisure. He took the burden of sin off of us and he placed the glorious cross on us. Huh? And I want to tell you, you can't say that that cross is light. That the care that dying to self every day is not the light, easy thing. Are you out there tonight? Glory to God. <laughs> let me let me go back here in, in Mark 11 and 2. Listen, listen to this instruction. Jesus said, go your way into the village over against you. And as soon as ye be entered into it, ye shall find a coat tied, whereon never man sat, loosing, bringing, loosing and bringing. And if any man say unto you, and, and, and you, you know what he said, the Lord hath need of him. Not that the Lord just wants him. The Lord hath need of him. You're more important in the kingdom of God than you realize, people. <laughs> Isn't that a beautiful concept? He don't have to have us, but he chooses to use us because to spread forth, to carry this gospel. A -a Amen. So, we look at this for a moment tonight. And we find in verse number two, the coat is tied. He's bound. He's not going anywhere. And I think back to you and I. We went all over the world, never went nowhere when we were bound. 
the vicious cycle, the repetitious cycle that we were we were this and then we fell into that and then we stood up and we got knocked down again and we, we come on now. I, I guess we need some so maybe some some more addicted folks that used to be addiction of the past. But let me tell you, something greater than addicted to, to dope or alcohol is to be addicted to this world out there. The things of plant, what we call pleasure, the things we put our bodies through and we and we call come on now I want to tell you in those very times the Lord used to pull for us uh, and do you remember when the Lord pulled for you amen but because you was doing your own thing huh? You just said, not now, Lord. You didn't speak up. You didn't look at the sky and point and say, not now, Lord. But subconsciously, you felt something dealing with your heart to try to pull you, to untie you, that you were bound to the that you were bound to the structures of the society of this world. And you were incarcerated to it. And you said, I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm not going to go that way no more. Only to find morning back to the same peril. Yeah. It's one of them teen challenge messages or something else where all them folks is honest. They know who they are in them places when I preach. Preaching in prisons, oh yeah, they know who they are. They're not ashamed to tell you. We had some pretty good honesty going on here this morning. Man, there was a good liberty in here this morning. Amen. Amen. Talk about drinking too much alcohol you hear people chiding me, yes sir, that's me. Huh? Thank God that's who we used to be yes. when we were tied. <laughs> Come on, when we were tied, when we were bound, we had no strength nor structure to break free from that. But Jesus has got need now. Jesus has got a need, and he's looking for people just like you and I to meet that need. His disciples, aren't we disciples of Christ? That's followers of Christ being led by His Spirit now. Glory to God. So we find out now that the coat's tied. The Lord said, workers, disciples, you go and untie that coat and you bring it to me. I think that might be why Jesus had to go out into the highways and the hedgeways and compel them to come in. Glory to God. You see, we'll, if not careful, we'll stop short by just inviting somebody to church. But God wants us to invite somebody to the kingdom of God. Come on. Share your testimony with somebody and show them by telling them and to point your eyes to Jesus, don't follow a man, but follow the Lord. He's got need of you and I. Amen. Jesus sends for him. Boy, aren't you glad that Jesus sent that good spirit for you and I? We bounce it back and forth between before regeneration and after. Before you were born again. Remember how you was born in this world unto what? Sin. And the only way to get out of being in the firstborn concept or the firstborn nature which was sinful is to be redeemed. Yes. Come on now. By a lamb. Yes. Glory to God. So the gospel and the spirit is sending for you. Oh, you're being untied now. Glory to God. He sends for you. There is nothing good in natural man to motivate him to seek the Lord. Oh, friend, listen. But when we be arrested, I said, and I ain't talking about the law dog. I'm not talking about the gun and the badge. I'm not talking about a physical arrest. I'm talking about a spiritual arrest. When, when, Pete, when Paul wrote in Philippians 3 and 12, not as though I had already obtained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I might apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus, somebody. Oh, my God. He loved us enough to arrest arrested us in love in grace and in mercy glory to God oh now listen listen verse number 4 says and, uh, and they went their way they got the coat now they, uh, they went their way and found the coat tied by the door without in the place where two ways met and they loosed him amen they loosed him now so now the coat 
The colt now is at that crossroads. He's at the fork of the road. He's enabled to get loose of himself. Amen. Just a side note here. You remember when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead? Now he told him to roll away the stone. He could have spoken. The thing would have just disintegrated. But he's incorporating. Come on now. This thing's always been about an incorporation. And he said, roll away ye the stone. He stinks by no word. I just do what I told you. Amen. And he and they did. And he called him out. Lazarus, come forth. And that's all he's doing. Lazarus, come forth still bound in what? Grave clothes. All right? The stench of something of yesterday. Grave clothes. The stench of death. A Amen. So what did he tell him again? Loose him. Let him go. Untangling. Free. Come on, y'all. Amen. Amen. Oh, I want to tell you, see, the Lord could have done a lot more, but he did enough to stop short where he could where he could have his people now get involved with what he's doing. I, I want to tell you, it's nothing better than when the Lord is asking you and I and to wait patiently on you and I to get involved with what he is doing, friend. The coats at the crossroad. I said, fallen humanity is in the valley of decision now. What's he going to do? He ain't going to do nothing. He ain't going to go nowhere. He's not going to be moved until somebody obeys the word of God and goes out there and unties, looses this thing. Not in another program, not voted on by another committee, but the spirit of God will lead you into a place in your own workplace, the job, the home, the school, or wherever you find yourself. We're needed for the master's use. Yes. I don't want you to. I don't want you to lose sight of this. You're needed for the master's use. Amen. Oh, friend, listen. Fallen humanity. That's who we were, but we resurrected into a newness of life now. Yes. Call it the new nature, right? Mm -hmm. The new old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. To who? Those that be in Christ. That's what Paul said. Amen. So we, we read on. Verse 5 said, And certain of them that stood there said unto him, What do ye? Loosen the coat. Now, they said unto them, Even as Jesus had commanded. They didn't try to form a bunch of new words. Come on. They didn't go and try to do it a different way. They simply followed the instruction. And sure enough, they were asked. They were called on the carpet. But what did they do? They give them the word that Jesus told them to say. Yeah. Man, I want to tell you guys, when we say the words that Jesus gives us, I want to tell you, you don't know how instrumental that becomes for the kingdom of God. Glory to God. You, what, you said, but I didn't see them get saved. Huh? Well, you might not, but you planted a seed. Come on. Huh? Somebody planted. Somebody come by and watered. Huh? It's God that gives the increase. We can't save nobody. Huh? But we just do obey the word of God, led by the spirit of God, and watch the beauty of, of, of resurrection happen all around us glory to God Jesus delivers the coat from his past owners that's what happened he's tied there's the owners Jesus has got need of him now what happened to the coat after Jesus wrote it there's no mention of that I don't know if, the, if Jesus instructed him to go take them back to that to the owner I don't know but I do know one thing that the disciples loosened the coat they were questioned uh, my God listen uh, they, the, Jesus delivers the coat from his past owners uh, Christ commanded and it happened glory to God do you know uh, that one breath of the, of, of, of the word of God which is Christ uh, to speak to uh, to speak to leukemia to speak to cancer to speak to anything any obstacle of infirmity uh, it will be gone just that quick uh, that's why we pray uh, that's why somebody will stand in the hedge at time amen somebody stand in the gap amen uh, for somebody that's not present uh, for the listen uh, not for salvation uh, but for healing glory to God uh, we can't 
can't stand. Uh, I can't stand in for so and so to be saved. Uh, meaning this, that if I stand in, God's going to automatically save because somebody, that, that person we're standing for has got to respond to the call of God, right? Uh, the call of God uh, because we work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Uh, but we do at times. We come uh, and we just say, Lord, touch our brother, touch our touch that person that's so worldly out there that is so blinded by the concepts of the world that they cannot see any beneficial thing they could offer by being saved and presented to the kingdom of God. That's how blinded we were. But thank be to God our eyes has been opened up and we can see the worth of the kingdom of God now. Glory to God. I said, Jesus, you remember when Jesus delivered you from your past owners? You was a slave to something. You, you know, we, we all fill in our blanks. We was a slave to something. Amen. And nothing else, it was a slave to self. But Jesus delivered us from this. Listen, sin shall not have any more dominion over us. The only one, amen, the only one I said this morning, no devil, no sickness, no disease, no high place, no low place can remove you out of the present, present hand of God. But it's a hand, it's not a fist. And if you so desire to stay in his fellowship, he so desires to keep you there. Glory to God. But sin shall have no more dominion over us. Listen now. He is not free to run and live a self-willed life. No, no. They loosed him and they brought him to Jesus. Jesus didn't rub him on the head and send him on the way. He was in need. Jesus was in need of something. He Listen, this donkey, he's not free to run and live a self-willed life. He's free to serve Christ, friend. He was free to serve Christ. You and I, we should be counting. How many, how many times could we count the wonder, wonderful pleasures of being in Christ's love, uh, being in Christ's presence, amen. Uh, count the miracles uh, one by one. Uh, you can count now to Jesus come back. Uh, he's done that much good for you and I. He has redeemed us uh, by his precious blood. Uh, we were lost. We were tied. We were shackled uh, and without something uh, being sacrificed, uh, something pure, something holy, uh, something without spot or wrinkle, something with no blood uh, something that was raw and pure uh, into the king uh, and the celestials of God. Uh, his son Christ, uh, he bore the weight of the cross. Uh, he took on every sin that it's ever been uh, and freely laid his life down at Calvary's tree. Uh, and they lifted him up. Uh, and when that, uh, when the, that, that uh, cross uh, fell into that hole and the structure showed him is crucified, uh, he said, oh, if the eye be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. There he is, making a presentation with his arms wide open. Come, and I'll bring you home in my salvation plan. Colossians, Paul says in 1, 12 through 14, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins. That might be one of the greatest scriptures of all time when everyone before and after is just as good. But that right there has got so much solid meat involved in that that you just would just stop and just spend, spend just a day looking at that and studying just that. Giving thanks. I don't believe at times we give God enough thanks. Right. But you got to understand what He's done for us. He's made us partakers of in His inheritance. We're partners now. Now, I don't believe the concept, Brother Ronnie, of, of calling Jesus my elder brother. He's my Lord and Savior. Now, that's a big concept, you know. The charismatics say, well, he's my elder brother. We, we heirs of God, joint heirs, 
But they take that thing a little bit too loosely, I believe. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm old-fashioned. I don't put myself on the line of Jesus. You shouldn't either. But heirs of God, joint heirs, meaning this. We've joined him to partake of his provisions and his holy word. We do not sit in the throne. <laughs> Come on. We do not expect, nor should we expect any praise. Come on. We're to be, listen, we're to be meek and lowly. Like that little, that little colt that's tied on the outside against a post, amen, with no hope uh, of escape. Uh, but the Lord said, I, I saw you. I saw you before you was even formed in your mother's womb. Uh, and I knew what you was going to become. Uh, and I knew uh, that you would be lost forevermore uh, unless you would just look, uh, lift up your eyes uh, and see the majestic, uh, glorious splendor of God's grace and mercy. Uh, and that we could just surrender totally, unconditionally to a Christ that give all to get you to that place of, oh my God, of communion, to be partakers, to be partakers of his great glory. My God, we don't deserve it. That's why you can't work it. We don't ever deserve it. But watch this. But you need to expect it. Now let me clear this up. Because it's grace. It's grace. And all through the Bible there's been a provision and a plan to get you and I involved with God. So I expect... I don't expect treasures and I don't expect uh, uh, no, no trials. I, don't ex I expect all that. But I expect, amen, that we could be we could be sincere to God because God's sincere to us. I expect when I lay hands on somebody that they'll recover. Come on. It's just a hand, an extension of God's hand. Why wouldn't you expect through faith, amen, to call those things or not as though they are, friend? Listen, I'm not talking about a name it and claim it, but I'm talking about standing on, on the constitutional of the backbone of the word of God which is our faith coupled with his grace uh, we can come to expect God to move uh, we can expect God to heal uh, we can expect God to grow us uh, and the likeness of his whole kingdom yes. yeah. see I was pretty close to a cutting edge and some of you backed off on me right there no I don't expect well, that's why if you don't expect nothing you'll never get it. you see what I'm saying that's faith guys study, study faith there's got to be an expectancy of, per, of what's performing His Word or doing. I should have used the word doing. His Word. Man, when we do His Word in faith, you should expect some results. Because if you never expect no results, you'll probably never get no results. Does this make any sense? See, y'all got awful quiet on me now. Yeah, it sounds like he might be watching some of them hot shots on TV. Now. I'm telling you the Bible truth right here. The gospel here. Glory to God. Listen. Jesus. Amen. Said I got need. I got need. So when they got that coat. The Bible says. The men let him go. They brought the coat to Jesus. And cast their garments on him. And he set upon him. And many spread their garments in the way. And others cut down branches off of trees. And scrawled them in the way. I mean they cast them in the way that. They paved the, the road. And they that went before and they that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of, our, of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he had looked around about upon all things, and now the evening tide was come. He went out of Bethany with the twelve. So now, the fulfillment of the first instruction is, is done. The colt has been brought back to Jesus. We find now that Jesus rides this colt that's never been rode. I, I mean, I just, I just, I love this. I don't know. I, I'm not a big 
donkey owner. But I do know one thing. They do have a stubbornness about it. Well, you, you, you answer me a question. Now, one that's never been rode, that's born basically stubborn and, 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 and ornery and possibly wild. Is it his nature to allow somebody just to get on him and ride? No. Meek and lowly? No. Huh? But I never see where Jesus has got to mount him up with a with a with a peach and bit in his mouth and spurs on his on his sandals. No, sir. I, I see it like this that Jesus just politely got on this this creature and this creature now that that's been labeled as a beast of burden. He's labeled as an unclean animal. Amen. And without retribution, if, if, if he's not redeemed, if he's the first that breaks the matrix, he's supposed to have his neck broke. But guess what? He's got the redeemer on his back right now. And he's waiting. My God, I can all. See this little donkey with his head up. <laughs> well, glory. I got the king of the world on my back. Oh, he took all the wildness out of me. He took all. He took all the wildness out of me. He took my ornery spirit. Man. I can't, you can't see it no other way. You cannot believe that the Lord of heaven and earth got on that thing and he wouldn't have been a kitchen fit. Huh? I mean, no. He didn't do that. Woo! Glory. Ah, he was, listen, he was meek and lowly. Glory to God, man. Man, he coming into Jerusalem now. They, they, he's got the whole congregation rooting him on. I'm talking about the donkey right now. Oh, we got Jesus the Messiah. They're coming in now to the city. And there's a crowd of people. They're cutting palm branches down. They're casting them out before that donkey. This unroad donkey don't say that he got spooked. He didn't back up. You got to understand the Messiah. He is, he is in need of the Messiah. He walks into that place. Just like you and I. You remember when we used to kick and buck and rebel? Oh, right. They say them old them things will reach back behind you and bite you. Whoop. That one Papa had, he done all kind of crazy stuff. <laughs> He's very unregenerated. <laughs> Papa got enough of him one day, got that axe hammer. Thank God he didn't have an axe on the end of it. He said, me and you can fix a talk, buddy. He cracked him right between the ears. Working that day. Mama brought me down there the next day. He's out there again with him. Same old stuff. He worked with him. He just said, I ain't do I ain't pulling this thing today. You beat me all you want. He had a rebellious nature. That's how you and I were. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, we were, oh, I wish to God I could say, well, the first time God dealt with me, I surrendered unto the Lord, but oh, I'd be a liar. I would still want to be in control. I was still wanting to be in charge. But one day I got tired yeah. of being tied to that pole. Yeah. I got tired of being mistreated by the cares of this world. I got tired of being addicted to something that I just couldn't break free from. And I remember when I called on his name. Hallelujah. He untied. I said he freed me, glory to God. Don't you remember when he freed you, glory to God? He said, who the sun sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Aren't you excited tonight to be free? But aren't you excited to be needed of the Lord? The Lord has called you to do something for the kingdom of God. The Lord will use you. We can just keep this old nature dead. James 4 and 7 says it like this. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil. And he will. Somebody say will. will. And he will flee from you. Yeah. Oh yes he will. Yeah. When we learn to die. When we learn to, to go ahead and admit that we're not in charge anymore. He's in charge. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. Glory to God. And when we learn that, that this life is, is a vapor. I was talking to Sister T the other night. Counted my age up real quick. I said, well, I've lived over half. 
probably maybe plenty over half. I don't know, Elder. Not sure I could live to be 140. Amen. But I might not live till I get home tonight. Come on. Come on. Oh, you, oh, I can live to 110. How about that? Y'all didn't believe it. But what I'm saying, we don't know that, do we? Because we're not in charge. He knows. He's got an infinite mind. Amen. His mind was so wonderful and beautiful and infinite that he saw you. He told Jeremiah, man, I, I knew you a long time ago. Before you was planted in the womb of your mother, I knew you, Jeremiah. Jeremiah served him. But it come to a part in Jeremiah's life that he just got so, he got so burnt out and so tired of the resentment and, and the non-response. And he found himself basically tied. <laughs> that thing had him tied now. He wanted to just quit. But then he said, but I couldn't. Because every time I said it was, it was something. Oh, it was something like fire shut up my bones. He called it the Word of God. The same Word. He, he finally understood the concept. The, the same Word He preached to all them, He had to preach to Himself. Uh, oh, my God. you got to understand, the Word that we go out there and bring, that's why your testimony is the greatest sermon you will ever preach uh, to a lost and dead world out there. You, you tell them uh, what God has done for you. Uh, and the best way to tell is to walk in that office with the proof. Uh, now we can do more than tell, we can show. Uh, and when we when we crucify this old person, uh, to let the new life of Christ shine forth, uh, I want to tell you, it will draw people. Uh, people will be inquisitive. Uh, not everybody will want it, uh, but some folks will want to know about it. Come on. Stand to your feet. Give the Lord a good praise here tonight. Glory to God. The Lord, the Lord is in need of us. He don't have to have us. Don't ever believe you're important enough that He's got to have you. But it's good, His good pleasure to incorporate you into His plan. That His plan would continue on. Jesus said something a long time ago. He looked out across them, that sea of them people and said the harvest is ready. It's right. But the what? Laborers are few. And that's all we are. That's all God's called a Christian to be as a laborer. We, we don't hunt. We don't hunt a place to preach. Our life preaches for us. Everywhere you find yourself, your life, you're preaching either for Christ or against Christ. In the actions, in the words, the dispositions. Every moment of every day, we can we have the ability to draw somebody near or push somebody far. Remember, and when we think we don't got to be so holy, just stop for a second and just re re retract where God brought you from. Yeah. The next time we say, well, I, don't, I, I just can't believe that guy's bound to that. You just stop and you go back and you just remember how bound you was to something maybe different. But can I say bound is bound. Tied is tied. Shackled is shackled. But the Lord can deliver us from them all. Give the Lord one more good praise. In this house tonight. Now this is the question. Who among us wants to be used of the Lord? Just about... Come on, it, it, it will be used of the Lord. Sometimes you feel limited. But understand, I think a lot of times we miss because we at times think or maybe even tell the Lord what we want to do. Elder, I don't think it works like that. <laughs> We are His servant. We're the servant of the Most High God. All through the times of the, the, the reign of kings, magistrates, or anybody of high regard like that, the servant didn't walk into that chamber and tell the king what he was going to do. Right? He humbly bowed before that authority and that king told him 
Oh, there's a need. See, there's always a need. And if we just get to that place with the Lord, it don't matter what, Lord. I'm yours. Come on, say it with me. I'm yours, Lord. That's why I, I, I shudder at some of the ministries that's got to have promotions to limelights and big, big, what am I, advertisements, can I say it like that? I shudder at that. No, you know, your pastor's not jealous of none of that. That's stupid. To think that, that, that we as just people orchestrate something that becomes supernatural, only that we'll get praise for it. How crazy, how ludicrous is that? But some of the biggest names in ministry, if not careful, started as humble as you and I. Y'all believe that? They didn't, they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't start like some of them's finished. Started, I remember, I had a great elder in, in Jonesboro. I, I, listen, and I'm not trying to throw a dark, or cast a dark cloud over Mr. Duplantis. I'm not. But my elder in Jonesboro said he, she remembered him when he was young. He just got called to preach. She said, Pastor, you see that piano right over there? He, I've watched Jesse sit at that piano and close his eyes and sing and praise God the tears flowing out of his eyes under such a powerful anointing. People respond to the altars and God helped them. She said, I saw that same man, but he was totally different on TV not long ago, she told me. And she said, all I can do is weep and say, God, what happened? I'll tell you what happened. We happened. Ego happened. Arrogance happened. Stay small. Lowly. Like that old beast of burden. Oh, glory, the Redeemer's sent for you. It's just a matter of time now for you and I. The Redeemer's sent for us. See, it's more than just salvation. It's more than just salvation. That's the first fruit. That's the first step. Now, there's a, there's a push to see you so filled with the Spirit to walk in power and victory that you can learn to cast off doubt and fear that you can shun the unholy and that you can reverence the holy that you can place your life totally situated in the hand of your God that you're ready now when he speaks <coughs> what two disciples went don't know right there but either any, any of the two he would have sent would have done the same results because they, they obeyed his voice. And that's the beauty of you and I here tonight, guys. God ain't expecting you to have a PhD. He don't care about how much education you have. He don't care how large or small your house is, what color your vehicle is. He don't care about your 401k. You know, he ain't worried about, amen, of the things you, you have or you don't have. He just simply knows his creation and he calls us for service. Yes, amen. And I ask one more time, who among us desires to be in the services of the Lord? Why don't you find an altar tonight and say, Lord, I've been asking, but God, you, I want to hear what you say. Lord, you open that door. Lord, you open that door. Oh, God, we thank you for this night. We thank you, Jesus, for who you are. And for this congregation that's came this way tonight. Lord, speak to our hearts. Let us worship you in spirit.